Hi Suraj, thank you so much for taking our time for this interview. May we request you to please share your journey, your story in your own words? Sure, I'll do that. And thank you for having me, Dikshita. Okay, so, so my name is Suraj Varya. I have a bachelor's in economics and a master's in financial economics. Mm -hmm. Since 2018, I've been working at Reliance Industries as a data scientist. Okay. So I primarily work within the risk and financial analytics space mm -hmm. as a project manager. So that's what I've been up to work-wise. Right. And sometime in September of 2020, mm -hmm. I decided that while I enjoy working in analytics, I wanted to explore some other opportunities. Okay. And as we all know, an MBA essentially helps you pivot into other industries or functions. So I guess that's the genesis of my MBA journey. All right. So in your opinion, what are a few factors or actions you took that made all the difference? Sure. So uh, let me talk a little bit about three factors that I think helped me in my application process. Okay. So firstly, I started early and I think that's really important. You need to give yourself enough time to prepare for the GMAT, to work on your applications, etc. So I think round one deadlines for most schools tend to be around the months of September, October. So try and give yourself at least six to nine months preparation time. So again, preferably nine months, but at least six months. Okay. So I think that's the first factor that helped me starting early. Second, I talked to a bunch of different people who had been through this journey. So fortunately for me, my manager has an MBA from ISB Hyperbath. So he was able to give me a lot of guidance mm -hmm. and he even helped me connect with certain other people. So all of that helped as well. So that's another suggestion that I would give everyone. So in case you don't have that connection, try and reach out to different people, people who have been through this journey because it's going to be a very long process. So you need that focus, consistency. So it helps to talk to people. And the third thing that helped me was uh, taking the services of an admissions consultant. So as you know, I hired Experts Global and that worked out very well for me. Now, this is really important. So let me spend some time here. What should you expect from an admissions consultant mm -hmm. versus what you should not be expecting from an admissions consultant? So let me start with the former. So what can you expect? So one, while I said that you need to reach out to people to get guidance, advice, there's a lot of information out there. So a good admissions consultant will help you distill all the useful information so that you're not really confused by conflicting ideas. So that's one thing you should expect from an admissions consultant. Two, they essentially help you structure the whole process. So while you're doing this, what you realize is the GMAT preparation and the application journey, all of it is very unstructured. So an admissions consultant should help you create a nice structure. So to give an example with experts, global, you guys shared an Excel sheet with I think 30, 40 different steps with clear timelines. So that kind of simplifies the whole process drastic. So I think at a broad level, these are two expectations you should have from an admissions consultant. Now, equally important, what you should not expect from an admissions consultant. One, they cannot transform you into someone who can magically get into Harvard or MIT or whatever your B school, your dream school is, right? At the end of the day, it's all about your history, your academic achievements, work experience, your accomplishments, etc. No one can change that. Having said that, what they can do is they can help bring out the qualities that are important for the admissions committee. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where you need to kind of rationalize your expectations. Okay. The second thing you should not really expect is that your work is going to somehow reduce. That's not going to happen. You need to put in as much or more effort when you take the services of an admissions consultant. All they can do is provide a neat little structure for you. Right. So having said that, I do understand a lot of people decide to do the whole thing on their own. That's fine as well. But my only suggestion would be please create some kind of a structure for yourself mm -hmm. so i guess these are three things that helped me okay wow this is amazing and it's really nice how you put forward your points about what a person can do and what an aspirant must uh, take into consideration before taking the services so with the benefit of hindsight what are a few mistakes you believe you committed in the process sure so i can think of one big mistake that i made so a lot of these schools during your application they ask you have you attended any of our information sessions and in some cases they'll ask you the date you attended it or who did you speak to now, unfortunately, I hadn't attended any of these sessions because I got all the information I wanted from the school's website. But looking back, that wasn't a really smart move on my part. See, the reason is MBA is extremely competitive. 
the moment they see something like okay this candidate hasn't really attended any of our information sessions it may give a slightly negative impression i'm not saying they're going to reject your candidature but then you need to do whatever's in your power to you know put your best foot forward okay. so i think that's one thing i missed out okay so you're going back to your gmat prep phase what were the main resources that you used and what tips would you give to the future gmat aspirants regarding that sure so slightly long answer but so at a very high level you need to ensure that you use very high quality resources right. so, so i'll talk about some of the resources i used mm -hmm. while i can attest to their quality uh, by no means is this an exhaustive list i'm sure there are other resources as well so with that out of the way let me talk a little bit about some of the resources i used so firstly official guide do all the questions from the official guide that is going to be your bible that's very important who so i used magush so i like the service they offered it at a competitive rate so that's my second resource then for quant you can use manhattan preps uh, books or their videos again super helpful mm -hmm. for verbal uh, for the critical reasoning section i used this book called critical reasoning bible by i think power score that was extremely useful i enjoyed reading the book and there's another book for sentence correction by manhattan prep Mm -hmm. and you can also find some useful videos on quant by this guy named ron kiorwal okay. they're very old but then i found them really helpful they're called thursdays by ron or something like that All so right. i think some of the resources that i used for my gmat preparation so they were helpful and the second part of your question some suggestions right, right. so i've kind of jotted down four main suggestions that i can give so firstly don't go by any rigid timelines that someone else prescribes for you so uh, when you talk to people what they typically say is take 2 3 months ka preparation that's the amount you need to prepare for gmat again it's not really set in stone it's largely a function of uh, your experience with standardized tests your familiarity with the material in gmat so for example someone may say i spent one month preparing for gmat i scored very well but maybe the person spent the last one year preparing for cat you don't know so that's really important so take how much ever time you need so that's going to be my number one suggestion which is why it helps to start early so that's one two you're preparing for gmat you're not preparing for cat now this is really important what i mean by that is i've seen a lot of third party test prep providers give you cat level quant questions and then they tell you the official guide is not representative of the difficulty of the actual gmat exam that's simply not true don't go by that you're preparing for gmat you're not preparing for cat so that's going to be number two suggestion number three understanding is not binary so the sense that we have typically is i've read something i either understand it or i don't understand it that's not really accurate there are layers to understanding often when you think you understand something you can probe deeper and find some blind spots and what i've found is the best way to deepen your understanding is to either a teach others that always helps to explain concepts to someone else if you don't have someone like that make up make up an imaginary friend i don't know whatever you have all right take the official guide questions mm -hmm. google them look at gmat club or the different solutions for the same problem mm -hmm. that helps you look at the same problem from multiple perspectives and i think that in turn deepens your understanding of a concept that's my third suggestion all right and my final suggestion would be maybe work a little bit on your mindset don't look at gmat prep mm -hmm. and the whole application process as a hurdle instead look at it as an opportunity to learn and to grow i think that definitely helped me and one final point is keep things in perspective so i read this the other day you had this consultant saying person xyz got into ncert with an average score of 700 the thing is 700 is by no means an average score right you need to kind of keep things in perspective so i understand that given if you are an indian male engineer even a score of 760 which is a 99th percentile can seem average but please keep things in perspective even a score of 700 is the 88th percentile so i think these are some broad suggestions i can give about that wow this is really inspiring and i'm sure all your suggestions are going to be very helpful to a lot of students in their Oops. journey to success so what would you like to say about your experience and learnings from managing the application timeline so i don't have a lot to say about this the only thing i'll say is your gmat prep your application process and your interview process as well hmm? each of these three, three things is very unstructured try and make it as structured as you can 
and obviously now there are obvious things you need to do stay committed stay focused be consistent i think that's a given so this is my broad theme make it as structured as possible all right okay so would you like to describe your interview experience with the b school yeah sure so here uh, let me again make three broad points here so firstly be prepared practice as much as you can mm-hmm. use an admissions consultant or on your own find 40 50 different questions that the interviewer or the admissions committee is likely to ask you then practice answering those questions or at least create some kind of a template for the answers in your head okay. the idea is this while you don't want the interviewer to think that you've memorized answers at the same time you don't want to be thinking while you're talking or use i think they're called filler words uh, uh that doesn't look good right so that's going to be my first advice Mm -hmm. the second advice again i'm borrowing this idea from you guys from experts global which is there are two things that any interviewer is going to look at one mm-hmm. are you capable enough two are you interested in the school so all your answers should somehow incorporate these two aspects so that's going to be a number two suggestion and three be ready for the interviewer to ask probing questions Mm-hmm. so what i mean by that is okay so i'll give you an example so this interviewer asked me what's the main challenge or challenges that your industry is facing i work in data science and one challenge we face is that there's a lack of people with cross functional experience people who have experience of the domain and an understanding of statistical algorithms so that's a challenge we face the next question was how has your presence helped in tackling that challenge fortunately i had an answer prepared for that as well so they will most likely dig deeper so be prepared for that as well so mm-hmm. that's going to be my suggestion for the interviews all right okay so according to you what are a few common mistakes that you would advise all the mba applicants to avoid so what we have covered right now they kind of also do talk a little bit about the kind of mistakes people could make so one thing would be i'm guessing or uh, two three months being really rigid not giving yourself enough time or maybe a flawed mindset again about the mindset thing while changing your mindset having that kind of a positive mindset is not necessarily going to improve your scores or get you into your dream school i think it's going to make you a little less miserable during the entire process so i think that's another advantage of having the right mindset and again uh, not talking to enough people that's another thing that people kind of or uh, make a mistake also so while i think that the factors are largely going to be common for everyone okay. the weights that are given to different factors will be subjective it's going to vary from individual to individual the first factor is this so post mba you may want to change your geography your industry or function mm-hmm. a good rule of thumb is to keep at least one thing constant so for instance i may want to work in india but change both my industry and function mm-hmm. i may want to go to the us or abroad Right. but keep my industry the same and change my function keep at least one thing constant now having said that i have met people who have managed to change all three mm-hmm. what we are talking about is odds or probability so that's the first thing you would want to keep in mind second do you see yourself working in india or abroad so if you don't like the work culture in india you think you want to go abroad and i think your answer is fairly straightforward what you would want to do third is how important is brand value to you so when you make a choice between say an excellent school in india and a decent school abroad or a decent school in india excellent school abroad how do you weight the brand value again there's another school of thought which says that at the end of the day you're doing an mba for the learning brand value should not matter i understand that but then again it's for the individual to decide okay. the next factor would be the peer group so obviously if you go abroad you will have access to people from different countries cultures life experiences etc yeah. how important is that to you the fifth factor would be understand the differences in placement process in india versus abroad there are differences try and understand what they are and finally do a worst case scenario analysis so again the worst case would probably be you do an mba you don't get a job but maybe let's not be that dire so after an mba everyone has some expectation of their salaries right and typically what people do is they look at the median salary of a school now again we we tend to be biased here so all of us think we are above average so we naturally gravitate to the median but it's always helpful to maybe look at a range so a lot of schools they give their median score and they give a range so for example i'm just throwing some numbers say the median um, salary is 100k mm-hmm. the lowest salary is 50k it goes all the way to 140k assume that you get 50k mm-hmm. what is your life going to look like at that stage there will be certain emis you would have to pay certain standard of living you need to maintain plan accordingly 
So I think those are broadly my suggestions. Some things I would want to look at. Yeah. Wow, your suggestions are really good, and your journey too has been very inspiring. So, what would be your final message to all the viewers watching this video? Give yourself enough time. A lot of people underestimate the time it will take to prepare for the GMAT, to prepare for the application, to prepare for the interview. Don't make that mistake. And two would be plan for contingencies because you never know when things can go wrong. I mean, look at the COVID situation. So plan for con uh, contingencies as much as you can. So I think that'll be my parting advice. Okay, this was really amazing. Thank you so much for giving us your time. and all the best for your future we really look forward to knowing more about your success stories in the future as well thank you dikshit thank you take care